I'm glad to be with you again. Happy once more to tell you what's on my mind these days. And as is generally the case, more often than not the case, what's on my mind is something that I've been reading in the scriptures. And that isn't because I don't read other things. I read a great many things in a great many fields. But my basic document is the Bible. This is the one that has guided me all through my life. And so, quite naturally, I am likely to tell you when we get together like this, something I've been reading in the scriptures. Uh, and this recent time, I've been reading in the book of Daniel, a book that we call a book of prophecy in the Old Testament. It has a little different category than that uh, as far as the uh, Jewish reading of the scriptures is concerned, but it's part of the, of the Hebrew scriptures for sure. And uh, I've been reading and thinking in my mind about two kings of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar and his son and follower to the throne, Belshazzar. Uh, just a word of background, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had gotten a great deal of spiritual counsel uh, from that intrepid man of God, Daniel. Uh, Daniel had helped him in and out of several desperate circumstances. And so, obviously, Nebuchadnezzar knew something about the quality that he had in this man, Daniel. And the scriptures indicate that as a result, he had elevated Daniel to positions of prominence. Then Belshazzar came to the throne. I don't know what went on in Belshazzar's life. I only know that when he's introduced to us in his story, it is only one chapter, and it is a chapter that really is one incident that tells us a great deal, I suspect, about his character, including something that struck me only this last week in reading in that passage. Belshazzar comes to us because he's having a great, great feast, a, a, a Bacchalanian kind of feast. They're eating as if there's no reason to restrain themselves, eating and drinking, carrying on, and then suddenly, handwriting appears on the wall. And uh, Belshazzar, as you and I would too, wonders what in the world this handwriting is when a hand appears out of nowhere and writing follows it. And he wonders what those words mean and uh, asks wise men, and the wise men can't answer it for him. Meanie, meanie, tickle your farson. And the end of the story really is You've been weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Now, uh, it was a dreadful message to get, but none of the wise men could help him. The part that fascinates me about this story in my current reading of it is this, that after he's tried his wise men and they don't have any answers, he's desperate to know what this handwriting means, and then his mother tells him that there is a prophet in the land, a man of God, an interpreter of dreams, a wise man, and that this wise man had done so many things to interpret matters for his father, Nebuchadnezzar. And so she urges him to bring Daniel in for help. And Daniel gives the message, the bad news, but Daniel has the answer. Now, here's what baffles me. I wonder how it is that Belshazzar, growing up, knowing something surely of the kind of things that went on in his father's life, that he had no contact with Daniel up to this point, wasn't even conscious that Daniel existed, and that it was his mother who had to tell him that there was a person who could interpret dreams. Does that mean that Belshazzar was raised as a spoiled boy who simply uh, succeeded to the throne, though he did nothing to prepare himself for it? Does it mean that he was so absorbed in secular activities that he had no sensitivity to even the moderately spiritual matters? Or is it simply that he didn't care about such matters? And if there were ever a reference to Daniel, he paid no attention to it. I raise all those questions because he should have known about Daniel before his mother told him. No question about it. And I say to myself, I wonder how it is in this world in which you and I live that some people living in the midst of perhaps godly neighbors, perhaps raised by good parents and godly parents, nevertheless somehow 
don't know what's going on in the area of their souls and the standing of their souls before God. We can shut God out by our indifference. Belshazzar apparently did. He had a person around who could have saved him from disaster, and he didn't even know that that person existed. That's what I've been thinking about today, and I wish you God's blessing in the remainder of this week until we meet again.